Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Noonday Prayer. I'm glad to be back with you after my vacation. Uh, we went to Key West with my family, and Julian got to meet his cousin, who's only a couple months older than him, and it was a wonderful time. But it is also good to be back. So... Today we are doing Noonday Prayer as always, which begins on page 103 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm for today is Psalm 104, verses 25 through 37. Psalm 104, verses 25 through 37, on page 736 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray the psalm in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed out of the earth, and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading for today is from one of our apocryphal books, from Sirach, also called Ecclesiasticus, uh, chapter 43, verses 1 through 12. So Sirach 43 1 through 12. The pride of the heights is the clear heavenly vault, the appearance of the sky in a vision of glory. The sun, when it appears, announces its rising. What an amazing thing it is, a work of the Most High. At noon it dries up the land, and who can endure its burning heat? A person blows on a furnace, working in its burning heat. But the sun is three times hotter when it burns up the mountains. When it breathes out fiery vapors, and shines forth its rays, it blinds eyes. Great is the Lord who made it. It speeds on its course by his command. The moon stands at its proper time, a notification of times and an everlasting sign. The sign for a feast comes from the moon, a luminous body that wanes when it completes its course. The new moon shares the character of its name, increasingly wonderful as it changes a signal on high for armies, shining in the vault of the sky. The star's glory is the sky's beauty, shining ornaments in the heights of the Lord. They stand at the words of the Holy One, just as he orders, and they will never grow tired as they keep watch. Look at the rainbow, exceedingly beautiful in its brightness, and bless the one who made it. It encircles the sky with a glorious ring. The Lord's hands stretch it out the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So September 17th, uh, yesterday, is Hildegard von Bingen's feast day. And Hildegard was an abbess in the uh, 1100s. Uh, she was born in 1098 uh, and lived until 1179. Uh, she was many things. Uh, she was a mystic, a poet, a composer, dramatist, a doctor, and a scientist. Um, she was her parents' tenth child, and since she was, she was tithed to the church. 
Uh, so she grew up in a Benedictine monastery, um, and then she became a nun uh, when she was of age. Uh, so she became a nun first, and then later became abbess, which is the leader of uh, nuns, uh, when she was 38 years old. She also then later founded new monasteries uh, for nuns uh, at Bingen and Ebingen, um, and, and at both of those she was the abbess as well. And Hildegard is such an interesting person uh, because she had spiritual visions throughout her life. Um, it's possible these were due to migraines, um, the type of pain and the type of things she saw um, are similar to what people see when they have migraines now, uh, but she would take all of these visions and she would write them down and illustrate them uh, and talk about what each of them meant. Um, and so we have many of her works still today that we can read. Um, and we can see many of her illustrations too. Uh, if you search online for Hildegard of Bingen, uh, you will find uh, her illustrations uh, if you look at the images. And she was widely respected uh, in her own time. Uh, we have hundreds of her letters that she wrote to kings, uh, bishops, popes, uh, regular people. Whoever would write to her, uh, she would write back and um, advise them as uh, she, with, with the wisdom that God gave her. Uh, she also practiced medicine, focusing mainly on women's needs, uh, and so she did many things as an abbess uh, that most women of her time would not be allowed to do. Um, another thing is that she preached. She went on at least four preaching tours uh, around the church, so she was very widely respected. Uh, and her music, we actually still have some of her music uh, from when she wrote it. And we had just changed the notation of music around that time, and it, it meant that now we are still able to read it. Um, some of the music before that time we aren't able to read because we don't know exactly how they were notating it. Um, but in her time, we can start to read some of the music that was written down then. And one of the things I think is most interesting is she wrote a play uh, that was a person talking to the various virtues uh, and also being tempted by the devil. Um, and whenever this person talked to the virtues, all of the virtues sang their parts. But the devil, he could only speak. Uh, he could not have any music because he's the devil. And I just think that is fascinating. Um, she thought music was an integral part of our worship. Uh, and so she wrote uh, this liturgical drama. She also wrote several songs to be used in worship. Um, and she was, so she was a really amazing person. Um, Hildegard is one of my husband's favorite saints uh, because, because of her music. Uh, and so we actually are working on an icon of her that we started two years ago, uh, and it is not yet complete. Uh, but when it is, I will show y'all and let you see it. Um, so I encourage you to look up Hildegard if you haven't heard of her before. She has been more popular recently, so you probably have heard of her. Um, but she is just an amazing woman and did so many things um, while she dedicated her life to God, to helping others in need. And our readings today, we have a reading from Psalm 104 and one from Sirach. They both focus on creation uh, because that was another 
part that Hildegard was very focused on. Uh, she talked about how um, creation um, is just a picture of who God is and how creation is entrusted to us and we are to care for it um, and make sure that it is not mangled or destroyed. Um, and so there were many things that she was very passionate about, that she wrote about and illustrated and uh, made music for throughout her life. Um, and so she is very deserving of being a saint in our church. So let us now continue on with our prayers. We are back on page 106 of our Book of Common Prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. God of all times and seasons, give us grace that we, after the example of your servant Hildegard, may both know and make known the joy and jubilation of being part of your creation, and show forth your glory in the world, through Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray for those on our parish prayer list. We pray today especially for Valerie Garoli, for Pearl Windle, for Charlie Swift, Ann Annis, Sue Dahl, Steve Brown, Maureen Oliver, Dick Kressig, Steve Keck, Phyllis Aubrey, Margretta McGregor, Lisa Duff, Barbara Caffrey, Phil Lesher, Holly Payne, Jan Packard, Dave Jacques, Beck Saunders, Dick Bolin, Joan Gerace, Tony Succi, Pam Painter, Karen Intreary, Candy Burquist, Dick Ullman, Sabrina Wade, Julius Ventura, Dave Wilkinson, Jen Morton, Cesar, Keith Jones, David Derber and family, Marina Robertson, Henry Vicelio, Betty and Branson Powell, Bill Gentry, Rick Williamson, Randy Williamson, Peter, Robert Trent, Shannon Gilroy, Joshua Bennett, Bunny Bassett, Sandy Bassett, Eric Bunch, Paul Bonstetter, Jennifer Barker, Linda Hasta, Dennis Quam. We pray for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world, for peace in our nation and in the world, particularly in Ukraine, Syria, and Sudan, and Gaza. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Margaret Ullman, uh, Gretchen Hood's mother, and pray for Gretchen and her family through this week. And we also give thanks. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Today, on the 18th, we celebrate birthdays with Joe Tucker and Becky Succi. Tomorrow, on the 19th, we celebrate a birthday with Leanne Kwiatkowski. And then, no anniversaries today, but tomorrow we celebrate an anniversary of Katie and Daniel Legrand. Uh, so wish those people happy birthday and happy anniversary and celebrate with them on another year. And now, um, this week on Wednesday, we will have our Wednesday night meal and formation. It will be uh, dinner at six and uh, Bob will talk about uh, St. Benedict uh, at 6.30. He'll talk about uh, the rule of life for St. Benedict and how we can apply that to our lives. 
Um, and then on Sunday, remember that at 5 p.m., the Norfolk State Concert Choir will come and perform. Uh, and so we invite you all to come to the Great Hall and be there for that uh, performance. It will be a wonderful time. All right. Well, I hope to see you all soon. And now let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, old donation.